Hey guys, it is a beautiful day. We are just up the street from Ballard. We're here in Washington, Seattle's over that way. And we're checking out the brand new Rad Power Bikes Rad City 5 Plus. These are really cool upgrades from what we had before. At first glance, especially the high step, it sort of feels like, well, what's different? You know, it's a little bit heavier, actually. It's about one pound heavier, 64 and a half pounds on this. Um, they're actually about the same weight. I weighed both of these yesterday. And it costs more, $17.99. So it used to be about $15.99. Rad Power Bikes had to raise their prices in kind of like late 2020. We've had the supply chain stuff and everything. But there are actually several other upgrades that make this worthwhile, in my opinion, that justify the higher price. First of all, the aesthetic. It's actually fairly similar. The old one had a battery pack that mounted on top of the down tube, and it was just kind of a plastic case. This one's aluminum alloy, and it was higher up, like the weight was higher because it wasn't sunk in. This one is sunk in. It's actually the same battery capacity as before, 672 watt hours, that's 48 volt, 14 amp hours. But look at how low this thing comes. So it brings the weight lower. It actually doesn't stick up as high, so the top tube can go a little bit lower. See, that's a nice angle, pretty low standover height for uh, a high step bike like this. And interestingly, the wheel size has changed. So before these were 26 inch wheels, now they're 27.5 by two inches. So you still get some, some width for stability and comfort, but they're completely rad branded. Before they were like Kenda plus rad partnership. We still got the reflective sidewall stripe, but now there's a new tread. So instead of this checkerboard pattern, we've got this really sleek hybrid and it's still got like a puncture protective belt that they've integrated. So you've got some durability, but you've got a quieter wheel and a more efficient wheel. So the range on this should be pretty good. We're gonna talk about the motor in a minute because that helps out as well. Lower attack angle with this wider di diameter. So that helps you to just smooth over bumps and it just adds some comfort. It's a really relaxed, smooth feel when you ride the bike. The front end has actually been dropped a little bit. So we've got this RST suspension fork, 60 millimeters instead of before, it was about 80. And so that brings the whole front end down and they were able to kind of extend this a little bit. It doesn't bulge out. The frame is not rounded like it used to be. It's much more rectangular. And I think that the graphics on this are really beautiful. They're kind of understated. We've got little splashes of orange here, like on the rims and right here, one of the spacers the button pad and then back here. But otherwise, it's like, this is nice. You know, it's gloss black with gloss metallic silver and that metallic silver is pretty dark and it's tying in with this rack. The rack is removable now. So you've got these mounting points for a bunch of baskets and trays and we got panniers and insulated bags and stuff. Same thing for the front. We've got that head tube mounted. Um, really great for, for like a tray or a rack. I'm saying it's great because if you've ever tried to put a basket on your handlebar or fork, you'll know that it actually changes your your steering a little bit. It, it kind of like adds to the inertia when you're turning and then when you park it like dumps to the side and spills all your stuff. So I think this is great. Of course, we have the headlight down here and you, you need to move the headlight onto the basket and then it doesn't point where you steer, but it still feels like, okay, you know, they've done that right. This is a really heavy duty, sturdy bike in terms of mounting stuff. The rear rack actually has a higher than average weight capacity, 27 kilograms, so 59 and a half pounds versus 25 on a lot of other racks, which is 55 pounds. You know, four-ish four pounds. It's nice, it's nice to have that. We've got this Yep child seat compatible window here for a child seat. It also works with the kind of the maxi one that connects onto the sides, the next version. Uh, we've got those bolts I talked about as well as pannier hangers on the side. And then Rad's own pannier, it's this waterproof one. It's got some nice reflective accents on it. And it's just got these clips and then this bottom clasp thing that grabs onto the bar. And if you position it kind of right here, it doesn't slide back and forth. There's even Velcro, so you can really tighten this thing down. You put one on each side. I think that's a great, it's a great option. These actually keep weight lower than if you have a trunk bag right on top. So big fan of that. I really like these bikes because I feel like they have good value. Rad has great customer support. They've been around for a long time. Their batteries tend to be very modular, so you can share them between the different models. And the batteries are even more durable than before. They've been doing a lot of testing and stuff. I'm actually gonna take this off for you right now and show you what this looks like. Because for me, this is just such a highlight. I just insert the key on the left side like this. When we twist it, it's actually uh, spring-loaded, so it pops up a little bit, but it's not one of those 
underside mounting batteries that can fall out and you know you got to turn the wheel because the fender and everything i like that this is top mounted and then there's this kind of curved design on top so grabbing it with your hand is fairly easy holding on to it even though it doesn't have a handle again 7.3 pounds on this 48 volt 14 amp hour and i really like that in terms of like positioning, you're keeping that weight low and everything, but it's it's also still fairly easy to get this thing in and out. And it doesn't seem like it's rattling a whole lot. That was one of my concerns. Like sometimes batteries rattle around later on. And this is a brand new bike, but it seems to be working great. Look where they position the charging port and the key, both very high up on the frame. Other companies seem to put it like down low a lot of times, especially with the mid drives. And that's just right there where the crank arm is. And you, you don't want to like bump that and knock it out of place or trip the bike or something so good job putting it up high part of me wishes it was on the drivetrain side of the bike because you know the bike leans to the left when it's on the kickstand but I asked Rad about that and they said well you know we've got to derail your guard but the kickstand's on the other side and if someone bumps the bike sometimes it does fall to the right and we don't we didn't want the key and fancy stuff delicate stuff up high we, we put that on the left side for that reason I said okay you know that that makes sense they've done a pretty good job and one of the other highlights here for me with the battery is that you know you can charge it right there on the bike or charge it off the bike just as easily and they've got this new case it's like highly water resistant it's got that water res resistant uh, zipper you can put it in there carry it really easily maybe you've got multiple batteries and you're carrying them around <laughs> look at that how fun uh, maybe you're on an adventure and you know you want to protect the battery pack that way and reduce the weight of the bike because you're putting it on a bike rack or something like that. It just makes it easier to lift. Again, 64 and a half pounds. It's a heavy bike, so taking off seven and a half pounds probably a good idea. But look what else they sell. They got this little clip thing. It's very cool. It goes right here to protect the leads from water, from dust. I think that is so thoughtful. Very few other companies offer stuff like that, and you know it could make a big difference. My dad has an RV and he has a couple of Rad Rovers that he got and they got really dusty on the back of his car. So he started using like a bike cover and stuff. I'll have a link in the description. You can watch his, we, we talked about it for like an hour. And so I think he would be a fan of this. And then again, the, the case just to carry it around. And this is the charger. Depending on when you get your Rad City, you may or may not have this orange cable. This is sort of the refined version. The older one is still compatible with these new batteries, which is really cool. And they both charge at the same rate. This is two amps. This one's actually slightly heavier. It's like 0 0.2 pounds heavier. I think they've just added some shielding and stuff to it. Still got that barrel connector plug and the removable wall side. So it's compact, it's lightweight, it's easy to take with you. And again, I just love that you can, you plug right into the battery, whether it's on or off the bike, it's up high. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Other durability features that I appreciate are this aluminum alloy guide. So we have plates on both sides of the steel chain ring, 46 tooth, nice standard 170 milli crank arms, and then these kind of off-branded aluminum alloy pedals. I think Rad was basically having these manufactured because they couldn't get enough of the Welgos. And it's a very similar pedal. It seems to work pretty well, although the spindle is raised a little bit. And I kind of wish the whole thing was flat and then the nubs were, you know, again, not the end of the world, but it, I like the Welgos a little bit better. We do have a lot of protection down here for the wires, which you can see extruding at the bottom here. But look at this channel. So Rad now has this like plastic cover with multiple bolts, and that allows them to have this like integrated wire look, but still give you an easier time when it comes to doing drivetrain maintenance and stuff. Because this is a direct to consumer brand, you know, you can order it and they'll ship you a big box and then you kind of unpack it and stuff. Or if you're in Seattle or San Diego or a few other places, they actually have stores now, and then they have some vans that'll come and deliver the bike. So it's getting easier and easier, but still, it's nice to have something that's fairly repairable and modular, you know, I, all these different wires and stuff. So if we come down here, got the slap guard, and then we've got the Shimano Altus derailleur. On the older Rad City, they had it at Sarah, which is higher. I talked to the founder about that, and he's like, well, you know, again, it's sort of a parts availability thing. We feel like this is a, it's it's a quality part that holds up pretty well. It's not the fanciest. This is a seven-speed drivetrain, but they've gone with the DNP nickel-plated freewheel, not a cassette, freewheel, but again, good range on this, 11 to 34 tooth. That's that really big ring, and that's great for starting or climbing, which is awesome if you've got this thing loaded up with weight. I, I really appreciate that. We still got the barrel adjuster, so you can finger adjust this if you're out and it's not shifting quite right. I appreciate that. And then what you might notice is missing here is before we had the power 
power cable for the motor coming and it would go like out and then straight into the axle. Now, it's on the left side of the bike. Here's the quick disconnect. And it's tucked in against the disc brake rotor and the frame. So it just seems really well protected, a lot less clutter. The rear dropout, or kind of the hub spacing here, is it's wider than average. It's 152 millimeters instead of 135 or 142. So for me, that was like, huh, I wonder why they did that. And then I feel like maybe that's because that's where the power cable comes in for the motor. So, you know, whatever the case, I do appreciate that it's an adjustable length kickstand. I do appreciate that they got that little torque washer there because this is a, power, a fairly powerful motor. It's one of the big upgrades. So before we had this gearless direct drive motor, it was much heavier. It was like over 10 pounds. This one's 8.8 .8 pounds, 750 watt nominal. And they say this one's 37% more powerful in terms of torque. And this is totally, it's not like before we've seen like Bafang or uh, Shiny or Shingy. This is something they've just completely contracted for themselves. They're still using 12 gauge extra thick spokes to make this sturdy back here. And up front, we've actually got 14, which makes it a little bit lighter and maybe add some flex. But in terms of like motor power and even just the visual aesthetic of this thing, if we look at it, it's a small motor. I mean, it's it's pretty compact visually, but it does feel very peppy and very capable. We've been doing some hills and stuff around here. But when you ride without any assist, you don't have that dragging kind of cogging feeling that you do with some of the direct drive motors. I think it's a, it's a pretty good upgrade. It seems to be working really well. And of course we have the Rad Power branding. The last thing to really think about, of course, is kind of this stopping paradigm, right? Before we've had mechanical disc brakes on like all the rad bikes and you know they they would kind of say yeah it's a little bit easier to adjust and handle yourself and so that's why we do it and i was always like i feel like that's got to be a price thing it's just cheaper to do mechanical disc brakes and they did a good enough job they had 180 millimeter rotors just like this but the right lever you know the cable had to go all the way to the back of the bike and there was just more friction and it would kind of set in a little bit more so you'd had to adjust it over time and stuff now they've gone with hydraulic finally so excited to see that on this rad city 5 plus model we've got this kind of nut branded uh, brake lever never seen that before but i spoke to the guys and it was like you know who makes this and it's made in a, at a facility by a same oem manufacturer that does other high quality stuff so i was like okay that's, that's cool adjustable reach levers as you'd expect about three finger there you know if i'm looking at that so it's kind of you know sometimes mountain bikes have two finger this is about three finger you can get a good mechanical advantage over it and they're not just like physical brakes, they also have motor inhibitors built in and brake light activation. So great job with these. I mean, you know, a lot of times some of the mid-drive companies, they'll get hydraulic brakes, but they don't have motor inhibitors because they're like, well, you know, our sensors are pretty good. For a bike like this with a throttle and, you know, it's it's got that 12 magnet sealed cadence sensor versus a multi-sensor, I feel like this was a this is a great choice. I'm really happy to see that. We still have the large 180 millimeter rotors, good mechanical advantage, good cooling properties, dual piston calipers, kind of unbranded. Seems like they do a good job. And then up front, 100 millimeter hub spacing with a standard nine millimeter axle, quick release skewer. So it's easy to take the front wheel off, a little bit more work on the rear, but at least we have the you know quick disconnect option and stuff. Another thing that's different aesthetically about this model is you know the, the battery's sleek and it's semi-integrated, but we used to have a box right here and that was like a controller box. Now the controller's inset right here at the base of that down tube. So it's pretty well protected and it just doesn't stick out as much. I really appreciate that. And you can see down here, this is actually like a splitter and it's rounded. So it fits perfectly onto this seat tube. And we've got the light cable coming off the back for that, that rear light, there we go. And then we've also got this just open plug. That is so cool. I'm really excited to show you this new accessory Rad has got. As I was looking at their new display, I was like, okay, you know, it's a little bit smaller, but it actually has two screens. There's no USB charging port. And they said, aha, we've got you covered, buddy. We got this new little dongle adapter here with a standard USB type A, five volt, one amp output on this. So you can charge the bigger, more powerful smartphones and stuff. Like I have an iPhone and it works. You plug in, you can charge right off of it and it would kind of connect up here in the front or here in the back. So if you've got cargo or something and you've got like a, I don't know, a tablet with you and then up front you've got a speaker and maybe your phone for GPS, you can, you got, you're covered, you're covered. And it's not just one, you can daisy chain these. So you can do like two in line, front and rear. How cool is that? Again, having a 672 watt hour battery and being able to tap into it 
I just think that that's really smart and neat to see some final points here. You know, I'm always thinking about the suspension for comfort, but we still have lockout, which is nice if you're just wanting to be efficient. We have preload adjust so you can preload the spring for your weight. This is not an air fork or anything, inch and an eighth straight. We do have sealed bearing headset and bottom bracket, so you're not gonna get creak and rust. We've got 27.2 millimeter seat post, which is, it's a fairly standard type of thing. And they've got that C SR Suntour NCX suspension post, so you can add some comfort that way. The saddle looks the same. It's got a handle down here to help you lift the bike and position it, but they've actually sealed this now. So it, it's not gonna absorb water the same way and maybe kind of squish out like before. We are in Seattle. So again, we got the fenders and everything. I, I think they've done a good job. And I might've mentioned this before, but as you're turning, you know, if you bump your toe into that, that front, it, it's not gonna crack it. It seems fairly durable several spacers here and a tapered spacer at the bottom with a riser stem and adjustable angle zero to 90 degrees tons of options for for your body type if you're a larger rider the high step is physically like longer longer reach and it has a higher minimum saddle position but it actually has a longer seat post so it's like 390 millimeters you can really get that thing up this one only comes in black like we see here the step through it comes in white or black so if you're someone like me you have a sensitive hip and knee i feel like it's kind of a, a great option it's still going to look pretty cool the white is a little bit more visible like if you're riding at night and stuff but you know again you already have the lights and the reflective tires and stuff so you could get the black one it could be like a his and hers thing or whatever or just have variety in a family i think it's so cool that they're doing two colors and the reach isn't that much shorter it, but the maximum saddle height you might need to upgrade the seat post to a 390 or, or higher if if you really want if you're really tall and you want the step through so i, I hope that helps guide you a little bit the other consideration that I, you know, I'm looking at this bike, it's a hot day, and I was like, ah, oh, no bottle cage bosses, but it would still be a little tight in here. I think some people do like a triangle bag, but this is so sloped, it's like you're kind of limited on space. They used to have bottle cage bosses down here on the down tube, but who's gonna reach way down there? I, I feel like it was just to check the box and maybe to put a folding lock or something. Now, Rad has two options. You know, this this aftermarket accessory thing where there's a metal cage for a bottle or they have like a holster where you can put the bottle and maybe a credit card and some keys or something. They both, they're right up here, easy to reach on the handlebar, appreciate that. I also appreciate that they kept the little flick bell. They're going with the same shifter mechanism as before. It's kind of a more basic one in some ways. It requires a little bit of reaching, but it's very intuitive because it has that, that indicator window especially if you're a new rider. And it's easier to use if you have gloves because the, the levers are just so big and pronounced versus triggers down here. There's the half grip twist throttle. So when you're going, you can operate it that way. The same sort of faux leather stitched ergonomic grips on either side. Again, the cockpit, a little bit busy, but you know, there's a lot of features and I think that's just kind of how it goes sometimes. Some companies try to wrap this stuff up, but then that can look a little tacky too. And you know, if you want to add the, the USB um, extender dongle thing, it's, it's really easy to do. Okay, the last part is the display panel. And this is really interesting. They've made a lot of really conscious decisions here. If we turn this on, and by the way, I know it's bright. I'm kind of doing this purposefully. It is a monochrome, kind of a black and white display. It's not color. And I think that stands out pretty well. So look at this. There's like R A D. So that's cool. Kind of a fun little Easter egg when you power it on. This is your level of pedal assist, your battery charge level indicator, which matches the one down here. 10 bars. Great job, Rad. For years, I've been like, mm, five bars, 20% increments. Kind of leaves you wondering when you get down to one bar, like, are you almost at zero or do you still have 20% with 10% increments, it's just, it gives you a lot less range anxiety, I think, and it's just a better feedback. I feel like it's doing great. By the way, we've been riding these for like two days and we, you know, we've only used, it's like a couple few bars, it's doing great. And then down here, there's a headlight indicator. We have a dedicated headlight button, so you can turn those off if you want to. And the lights, I, I kind of mentioned this before, we got the Spininga Solo single LED, we got light pipes, so it spreads it out. It's a decent light in terms of brightness and reflective. We got another reflector down here. The really cool thing is you can press this button and it turns to flashing mode, kind of like a, a slow blink. And if you pull either brake lever, you get that bright mode. So it just keeps you extra visible. And the headlight is pretty sweet. It is mounted to the arch on the suspension fork. So there's a little bit of, by the way, I turned the lights off. It's what you were seeing back there. Even when the lights are off, 
it, it, it still has brake mode or blinking. I think that's cool. So the headlight is pretty nice. Mounted to the arch, it means it can vibrate around a little bit, um, which isn't great, but it points where you steer and it's not cluttering up the already kind of crowded cockpit area. So I, I think this is good. It's got the light circle, like a fancy car. And then in the middle, there's this like focus lens, 80 lumens pretty good setup and it's got these heat sink blades on top that help to dissipate heat if you're out on a hot day very well done if you do get one of those trays or baskets the, the light needs to be moved like onto the basket and it doesn't point where you steer at that point that is one of the, the little trade-offs back up here to the display uh, on the main unit we've got time like that's like a clock and then odometer but if you hold up and down simultaneously, you can change those to trip time and trip odometer. So that's kind of cool. And it remembers which one you left off on. So you kind of set it and then you've either got the clock or the trip time and the odometer or the trip distance. In the middle, we've got the really big number. That's your speed in miles per hour, kilometers per hour. I'll show you how to change that in a second. And we've got a wattage menu down here. So as you use the throttle or pedal assist, you're, you're gonna see how much energy you're using. Again, I'm just, I'm really thrilled that they use the sealed cadence sensor down here, 12 magnet. It's really responsive as far as cadence sensors go. 170 millimeter crank. We got the more powerful motor. It's just a, it's a nice setup. It feels comfortable. And I mentioned the crank length just because it feels like a natural bike and the length and the height and everything. I measure all that stuff. It's back at the website. And my goal is to help you to get a bike that feels right, that fits well, especially if it's not one that you can test ride. So we come back up here. Always starts in pedal assist level one, but we can take it down to zero and use throttle only like a little scooter or take it up to five. And then it's kind of like the pedal movement is like the throttle. It's giving you full blast the whole time. The throttle itself is actually variable speed. So if you only twist a little, you only get a little bit of assist. I think that's nice. If you hold the light button, you can clear the trip time and the trip distance. That's another little secret. If we hold the down arrow, we got walk mode, which is handy if the bike gets a flat tire, or maybe you're loaded up with cargo and you're in a space where it's just too crowded or too technical to ride. Appreciate that they, they kept that. And then if we wanna get in and do some of those fancy adjustments, we hold the down and light button simultaneously. And now we can adjust the clock. Do we want a 12 hour or 24 hour clock? Press the light button again. We can set the clock time. Press it again. We've got miles per hour or kilometers per hour. Again, we got brightness. So really cool. You can actually adjust the brightness of just the main display. So it's at the highest brightness right now, but it goes down from here. Unfortunately, it does not adjust the brightness of this accessory display on the left. Now this one has kind of a smoked plastic over it versus a more clear plastic on this one. I, I mentioned this to Mike, the founder. I was like, oh, why doesn't it make both? And he's like, well, that one's a little more muted on the side. And you know, we, we kind of got the center one. It's like, okay, I, you know, I get it. Like, at least you can control the lights and stuff. And if you're really concerned about this, you could put like a layer of tape over it or something. I, I don't know, get creative. But that's, that's the whole thing. When you're done, you hold the light and down button again. We exit the display and we're ready to ride. Give this thing a go. Okay guys, I wanted to do sort of a hill test to kind of put the, the torque measurement to the test and the power. We've got this, this is a pretty good hill. You know, this is flat and then this is a, a hill to the right. It's gravel. We'll see how these tires perform. They're, they're not quite as like, you know, hybrid with the checkerboard as before, but they seem to offer good traction. Tom's over here, he's gonna take it first. Go for it. Are you on level five? I am. He's in level five. Good luck. Looking good. I weigh 135 pounds. I'm gonna try to make it up just with the throttle right here, okay? So here we go. Whoa. Bumpier than I was expecting. <laughs> no problem, made it up just with the throttle. That was, that was impressive.
dry. I can feel a little bit of water splash up, but kind of on my shins. I'm wearing shorts, but I, th I think it covered, I think it did a pretty good job. Definitely keeping my back clean and I'm not getting anything flicking up to my face, so that's good. You know, the old tires were kind of this checkerboard pattern, and so the new ones are quieter, they're smoother, it's got the nice, strong hydraulic brakes. I can tell that it's it's torquier, right? There's more power, even though the wheel diameter's a little bit wider, 27.5 versus 26. Since they're two inches wide, the tires versus like two and a half, it kind of, it kind of evens out. It's a, it's a nice feeling. It's a well-balanced bike. We lifted it from the middle of the bike and it balanced pretty well uh, earlier, so, Geometry wise, uh, I think they're doing a great job. So this is the Rad Power Bikes headquarters. Kind of cool to see. We've been out burning the midnight oil. It's a it's a good chance to see those lights in action and just do a ride by and stuff. I'm here with Tom's helping me out. He's gonna hold the camera. I'm gonna ride by so you can see what that looks like. Thanks, Tom. Yeah. kind of go bright so you can uh, kind of see that going on. I'm going to ride by one more time here. Brake test. Yeah, working pretty well. Oh, and I wanted to, again, compliment like pretty good pretty good standover height here. I can still handle the bike pretty well. Yeah, you know, the seats, it's, it's fairly high right now. I've got like a 31 inch inseam, maybe 30 and a half or something, and I'm getting full leg extension, but I'm still feeling pretty comfortable and I could angle that up and get even higher. So uh, the bikes only come in really like one frame size, but having two different builds, it's, you know, gives you some options. Well guys, as always, I've had a blast checking out these bikes. It's been fun to, to visit and get to just go deep on them. There's so much that's been changed and improved. I really respect Rad as a company. I feel like they offer the good customer support. And again, these bikes are some of my favorites. They're not like super big and heavy like some of the fat tire bikes. And those are great if you're riding in sand or something. But for a lot of people, it's just cruising around the city or whatever. You got your comfort, you got your utility. The style I think has been improved. The range has been improved. They're great products. I have measured everything on both bikes, the length, the width, the height, the standover height, just everything I could to help you out. I also have some forums and of course the comments. And the idea there is I love to get your feedback. I'm looking at brand new bikes. The batteries aren't rattling. Nothing's wrong with these bikes. They work great, but I, I genu genuinely want to help. I love you. I hope you have fun out there riding. Enjoy the, the good weather and friends and family, and we'll see you next time.